Davis says Al Harzi also coordinated suicide bombing attacks in Iraq. The Treasury Department had slapped economic sanctions on Al Harzi last year. Republican presidential candidate Rick Perry says black families should hold Democrats accountable for what Perry says have been decades of failed anti poverty programs. In a speech focused largely on race Thursday, Perry urged his party to fight for the African American vote. The former Texas governor said Republicans are the ones offering blacks, quote, the hope for a better life for themselves and their children, end quote. Ohio Governor John Kasich will reportedly announce his intentions for the Republican presidential nomination on July 21st. David Bozell with For America says Kasich's expansion of Medicaid may hurt him with some voters. Look, I can understand why a lot of these candidates are trying to get in. They see a path. And with Governor Kasich, if he can win Ohio, which is a winner-take-all GOP primary state, and it's definitely a purple state in the general, then he has a case to be made to keep going. But if he can't win his home state in Ohio, he might as well just get, vote himself off the island. Former Virginia Senator Jim Webb is running for the Democratic presidential nomination. More on that from Jerry Bodlander. The 69-year-old Webb is a decorated Vietnam veteran who was Navy secretary before he served in the Senate for one term. He announced his candidacy in a lengthy statement on his website, acknowledging he faces long odds, but saying the country, quote, needs a fresh approach to solving the problems that confront us and too often divide us. For more election coverage, visit onenewsnow.com. Credit card companies are backing away from a source of human trafficking. Charlie Butts reports that now includes three firms. MasterCard has announced plans to stop handling adult advertising fees for Backpage.com. Attorney Pat Truman is president of the National Center on Sexual Exploitation. Every day on Backpage, women are sold into trafficking, and it's the leading source for ads of prostituted women, many of whom are trafficked. But about 80% of your advertisements for women and children sold in this country are right on Backpage. USA Today reports American Express has also dropped Backpage, a Texas-based firm with a Dutch owner, which makes $9 million a month. Backpage has been on our dirty dozen list for two years just because of this trafficking in women that takes place on its site. And I'm so glad that organizations like MasterCard and American Express are waking up to the fact that trafficking is not tolerable in a decent society. Visa has also announced it won't deal with Backpage, so the firm will effectively be defunded unless company officials find some way to work around the cancellation. U.S. employers added 223,000 jobs last month. The report from the Labor Department also shows the unemployment rate fell to 5.3 percent, which is a seven-year low. But Dan Celia Financial Issues says that is because of a drop in labor participation. He adds that wages were flat for the month of June. This is the lowest that wages on an annualized basis have sunk since 2012. So basically wages are doing nothing, not to mention all the fear we have about being able to pay our bills. Celia adds that hours worked per week was unchanged, another issue that Celia says has been happening for several years. In final news this hour, NASCAR is requesting fans refrain from displaying the Confederate flag at NASCAR events. Daytona International Speedway will hold a voluntary flag exchange program this weekend in which fans can swap any flag of their choice for an American flag. You're listening to FirstAmendmentRadio.com worldwide. Freedom is never free. We need your support today at FirstAmendmentRadio.com. Okay, welcome to the Investigative Journal on this July 3rd, 2015 day on our calendar. I'm your host, Greg Anthony. You're listening to FirstAmendmentRadio.com. As always, you can catch my show at 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. That's weekday evenings, Pacific time. 
on FirstAmendmentRadio.com. You can go to my long-running website, ArcticBeacon.com, A-R-C-T-I-C-B-E-A-C-O-N.com. And little did I know that when I started that website, oh, maybe 10 years ago, with that name, that it would have some really significant meaning 10 years later. Even though when I chose it, I had no really idea of why I did. Maybe the Creator and God works in strange ways, as they say, leading your hand to places that you never thought you would go. And if you look at the picture, this is I don't even have it on my website anymore, and most people know me by the investigative journal because I decided to do radio uh, more than in more than uh, newspaper articles and articles because people don't read anymore. Uh, so I figured maybe they got the patience to to listen to people talk, and then I find out after all these years now everybody wants to be a YouTube star. That's where you go now, YouTube. That's where everything is. And I really don't know how to do those yet. I'm not really technically advanced. And I'm not considered a modern man. I don't want to be a modern man. I never wanted to be one. I just happened to be born during this period of time. I had no choice. But modern men really make me ill. All they're doing is sitting behind a computer, figuring out all these little codes and texts and all this stuff. And then people are doing Internet... Uh, YouTube's and you don't even know who they are. They go by phony names. At least I use my real name. I use Greg Anthony and the last name is Szymanski. I decided to go to Anthony because it's easier for you people to pronounce. Because most of you can't. And you know, I was having an interesting discussion with a Native American today. And I found out they get a cap from all these, uh, they're not, you know, the U.S. government's bought the, the ones they haven't killed. The ones le- left, and there aren't many of them, I live near uh, an Indian tribe, uh, what they do is they build a casino, and then the ones that aren't the leaders who are making a lot more than just the average uh, people to, uh, left on the reservation, they get what's called a cap from, and this one guy I met, he gets $5,500 a month just for being a Native American and living on in the uh, the, uh, the uh, reservation that still exists, where the casino is at, and that's for every. I so I said, hey, can I be an Indian? And I said, you know, why don't they do this for Polish people? The same people wiped out half of Poland, and now I'm over here scraping to make a living, and don't uh, you know? What's the reason that the American government, oh, you know why? They want to buy and pay off these Native Americans so they keep quiet about what really happened to them. But I started talking about what went on with the genocides in Canada and the mission schools with those nasty Jesuits. You know, the, the, the leader of this cult called uh, the Catholic religion is a Jesuit priest. And go look at the background of the order he's involved with and all of the genocides they were involved with with the beginning of our country, with the mission schools in America, with the mission schools in Canada. Appalling. But we don't care. Now, I guess they could buy and pay off every Polish person for all you know, the millions of Jews and you know, half my family was killed over there. So they figure, ah, they got us here now, what the heck do we care? We'll forget about, blame it on Hitler when they were involved with Hitler. So give me a break. You know, what really is going on? That's the real question on this show. I always ask it. There are many different ways to look at things. Many different ways. And uh, today I'm going to continue that discussion uh, what was I going to talk about? You know, I get off on these tangents sometimes. Don't we all do that? Next thing you know, the day's over. And you don't even know why you, you woke up that day. I do that a lot. Well, oh yeah, I'm back to YouTubes. You know, this media frenzy. You know, everybody now. When I wanted to be a journalist back in the day before the Internet, you know, it was an actual profession. I didn't realize how tainted it was. But... You know, nowadays, everybody is. But I find, it, you know, many people in this, they got to get on YouTube. They, gotta, they, they can't spell. 
They can talk. Some people. And then they use phony names. You know, so you don't know what you're getting. So I tell you what. You've got to figure out first if this information is good or it's bad. And I'm going to give you a couple Bible quotes here. <laughs> Boy, I hope I don't get struck by lightning for doing this. God, I'm really trying to, to work things out. Uh, but anyway, we're talking about the circle earth. I don't use the flat earth. People think you're crazy. Call it a circle. That's what God called it in the Bible. In Isaiah 40, 22, he said, Is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. In uh, Job 22.14, I guess you could call it Job, it's J-O-B, it says, Thick clouds cover him so that he cannot see, and he walks above the circle of heaven. In Proverbs 8, everybody loves Proverbs uh, 8.27, when he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep. Now in Thessalonians, I always like that. I think I would name my child Thessalonian. Thessalonian Szymanski. That, that go, you know, I've never heard of that. That's a good name. Call him Thess. Thessalonian. 521. Test all things. Hold fast what is good. It doesn't say test some things that fit your belief system. It doesn't say test what is good for the goose and is what's good for the gander. No, it says test all things. That's everything. Test it. How are you going to do that? You can't do it by relying on your fellow man to tell you what it is. You've got to figure it out for yourself. Go to the, go to the deepest ends to find out. What are you going to do? Close your eyes and go, you know... God tested for me? No. He wants he says test all things. He's talking to you. Hold fast what is good. So you gotta figure that out. So what does that mean? It means even test whether the earth is a planet or a plane. Now isn't it interesting the word planet? Take away the T and you got plane. Take the last two letters and you got E T. Planet. You think they just did that to screw with you? Maybe. But you take away E.T. Now what is E.T.? Extraterrestrial. Plane. You live on a plane, not a planet. They created planet. There are no planets. They're stars. There's a moon and a sun and stars and all these planets, Pluto and all this garbage they're telling you doesn't exist. And where did the word planet come from? I, th I said, take away the ET, the extraterrestrial. There are no extraterrestrials. There are no, there's a T, take away the T, and you got a plane. Interesting. Oh, they'll screw with you all the way. So test everything. Test it. Yeah. Now, you know, tomorrow, I guess, is slavery day. I don't call it independent to stay. Slavery day. We were slaves from the beginning. Do your study. I, I consider myself to be a closet scholar on the American history story. Because I don't really buy what they tell me in the books that they give us. There's a whole situation where the Vatican and the Jesuits, they should be called their founding fathers. They were initial. They were here to start this country to be Catholic to begin with to be a cult to begin with, and to be slaves to their system to begin with. So these founding fathers that are considered to be, oh, let's go back to the Independence Day founding. No. Let's call them out for what they are in Independence Day. Slave masters, and that's you're all slaves. And it was confirmed when the 14th Amendment was ratified, and it really never was ratified when you really look at it. And that's what you live under today. Black, white, Chinese, I don't care what you are. You come into this country, you're a slave to the owners of this country. And you know you ain't in the club. No. You're just like me. You're out of the club, and they'll do what they want. They'll screw with you all the way to tell you that you live on this planet that spins around at 64,000 miles an hour. That's why you can't think anymore, because you're always spinning. Hey, listen. I am convinced 
that if you want to believe NASA and all their garbage, go ahead. It's that simple. Or you want to li- re- just, I'd rather listen to plain Americans back in the 1800s who were talking sense about what we lived on. And then they complicate it with Einstein, who's an idiot. He makes absolutely no sense, and he, he died knowing it. I'm for sure of that. And how many more of these guys? You think they lead a precious life? Oh, they died knowing they're... Or they, you know, if they're going to talk when they're old, they kill them off so they don't talk. But they're living a lie their whole lives. And it is it great to follow what Thessalonians said? Test all things. Hold fast to what is good. You do that, you're going to be a lot happier. I don't care if you don't have a penny in your pocket. You know, they'll they'll take anything away from it. They'll take it all. And you know, American people will give it to them. Just like they'll give this country to the Pope when he comes here in September, thinking that they're giving it to the good when it's the bad. You know, I tell you, on this day before... The slavery day comes on July 4th. I always get a little ill. I'm starting to feel my stomach turn as it is. And if I, I don't get on the air on that day because I'll tell you what, I throw up. All over the microphone, all over everything. I can't stick it. My stomach just gets turns to see these people come out with all of the stuff that isn't true and not even question. Oh, they question it, but then they're going to take in what they think is, you know, what suits them. And that's what's so terrible about this country, you know. They give you just a little bit to think you're in a good shape when you're not. Now, what do they tell you then? Oh, revolt against this country. Don't revolt. Don't even try. You'll end up in jail or dead. And I'm telling you why. They want you to revolt. They want you to create chaos. They want you to do... Look what's going on all around the world. Yeah, things are going to happen here. And then they're going to say, you don't believe in God or country, and they'll jail you. And you know, your fellow Americans will believe you. Believe them, not you. So I tell you what, search for what is good, search for the truth, and don't try to revolt or run away. There's nothing you can do. God ordained this world the way it is, and there's a reason for it, only he knows. And that's what you're here to figure out. And who are you to think it can be, you know, you can think it'll be better, but it ain't going to be. And why does it always get worse? Because, you know, you're putting your faith in mankind, you're putting your faith in yourself, and that's where you're going to really find problems. So, question all things, test all things, test your belief systems, all you good Christians out there who think, you know, I love this, though some people will go, oh, you know, Oh, wait, uh, the earth and sun, the sun, the the earth is stationary, but it's a globe. It can't be a globe if it's stationary, if you think about it. And it never says globe in the Bible anywhere. You find it. So, just this big issue of where, is it a big issue? Oh, no, who cares what you live on? Let them BS you till hell freezes over. And let them steal all your, they're going to take it anyway. But at least you know. And then, once you start researching, the, once you start really testing, it's funny how God does things to you. How, you know what, I, there ain't no person that should be talking like this, but because I was a confirmed atheist. Oh my God, I grew up in the Catholic Church. I've been turned every which way upside down. And I should have, you know, been on their side. But I didn't. I don't know why. I don't even know why I picked that website, Arctic Beacon. And, you know, there's a picture I put, and you can find it somewhere. And it was one man standing by an ice wall. Now, what did that mean? I hadn't had no idea. I thought it was cool, you know, to be alone in the wilderness. But maybe what it means is there is an ice wall surrounding this whole plane that we live on. Now, I talk to a lot of people about this subject. Oh, yes. I've even had people tell me I'm crazy and then come around and say, no, you're not. Really makes sense. And then I'm looking at all these people. This issue is huge now. I even picked up a a little tidbit where Obama was commenting on the flat earth people and calling them crazy. So there is something going on here. 
somebody, God wants, maybe this is the time for, you know, I think he picks times and places for people to, to understand things in that book. And maybe this is the time to understand this. I don't know. Maybe I'm off base totally. But I do know that I've been searching this out for hundreds of hours, talking to hundreds of people. Please send this anywhere to anybody. To Please send yesterday's show I did that was uh, July 2nd to Matt Damon. Please do that for me. I don't like to, to push on these people because once they see my name, they don't even open the email. But send my July 2nd show to Matt Damon. You can find his agent. You can find some way to get to him. He, he likes to blog. Because I think he'd like to hear my comments about what he was commenting on that was sent to me, that I got to listen to. And just because he's a big actor doesn't mean... I work with these big actors. Half of them, you know, they're closet truth tellers. They'll tell the truth to their friends while they're, you know, high in a margarita or, or a pot. But then when it gets to really, you know, the public eye, they're like, oh, I think I'll side with the Vatican today. Because I want to make my million dollar movie next month. And that goes for Tom Hanks and Ron Howard too when they were making that Angels and Demons movie and they had to go to Rome to get their financing. Uh, so, the idea that the Earth is not a planet is not new. But so many people now are getting to figure that out. And, and so what happens is the, you know, what really happens then is all of these PSYOPs people that are going to get in there will say, hey, listen, I'm a flat earth or a circle earth person. And they'll lead you down this road like you think that. And then all of a sudden they'll say something so crazy. And what they're trying to do is discredit anybody that's really doing good research. So you got to figure that out. I don't know who they are. They do it in everything. They do it. Alex Jones is an example. In the truth movement, they'll do it in 9-11. Even there's people in the anti-Vatican movement that do the same thing. The Jesuits have been doing that for years. Back in the French Revolution, they had their inside men criticizing the Jesuits, but they want to lead you to where they're going to take you. What better way to control opposition or thought opposition than to have somebody in there that's on their side that acts like they're not. They're, they're masters at it. So there are people in the anti-Vatican movement that I push that are working for them. It's up to you to figure it out. Throw me in the bunch. I don't care. Figure it out. Because you sure as hell ain't going to believe. If I say something, then, oh, somebody else will say, oh, no, he's not. And if he's got more listeners and they're bigger and stronger, oh, they'll believe them. So I'm not even going to get into that. You're the one. And hell, don't make the decision. If you're just a listener out there, you got a choice. Join them or join the truth. Or join those who want to test all things, hold fast what is good. Join those people or join them. you got a choice. I don't really care what you do. To be honest with you, I'm not here to lead you anywhere. I'm here because I want to make myself available. That's it. To people who want to listen. That's it. I don't care. So let's get that straight. Do you think I'm here to evangelize? No. I'm here to point out some things I learned in my life, I've researched in my life, I've listened, and I've talked about. I don't want you to revolt. I don't want you to draw arms. I don't want you to do anything but make yourself available. Because, you know, I like, without the Vatican and without these bad people, I wouldn't even be here. They wouldn't have led me into testing all things and hold fast to what is good if it wasn't for them. So I want to thank them. I want to thank them including all of our leaders, for teaching me to test all things and hold fast what is good. And like I said, I don't really criticize them. That's what they chose. I just think that you have to make a choice and you have to understand both sides. Do you want to be with them? Or do you want to test what is good and hold fast to what is the truth? Or do you want to be deceived? Because I will tell you, when you look at both sides closely, you will see Nassau is telling you you live on a planet. Then there are people that say, no, we live on a plane. 
I believe, the people that say we live on a plane because common sense and a lot of the things out here make sense. And the people that are pushing that have no agenda. Now, NASA has a huge agenda, trillions of dollars, wasted, teaching a lie, what I consider to be a lie. Now, you may not, so go figure it out for yourself. I don't really care what you come up with. I don't care if you come up and say the world's square, or it's a triangle, or it doesn't exist and we're all holograms. I don't care. Just base it on common sense. And this thing about modern man, you know, what's modern man? I, You know, modern man is a robot. That's what most people are today. They're robotic, even though if you stick them with a pin, they're going to bleed. Because they believe everything they hear from the leaders, even though they say they don't. And they believe everything that comes, you know, what is a robot? Someone who utters what other people say just because they're told. That's what most people are. Where's the free thinkers? The ones that test all things and hold fast to what makes common sense and hold fast to what is good. Where are these people? There aren't many. Hidden agendas, robotic people, modern man, I don't want any part of it. You know? Oh, yeah, tell me how to do this. So make sure you know how to use the Internet. Get on there. You can do this. You'll spend your whole life being a robot. Not me. I don't want a part. I'm not a part of their club, and I don't want to be a modern man. So where does that leave you if you feel the same way? It leaves yourself making yourself available and finding <laughs> those things that you want to hold and test. Not believing, not trusting people who have lead you into certain areas that you don't want to go, but you just have to because you're a robot. Robotic. That's what it is. And pretty soon, you know, they figure, well, these robots, they're costing me too much. I think they think too much. They even, you know, they question too much. And that's not good. Uh, And they want too much money. So why don't we just destroy them and we'll build them. And man, then, then we'll have it the way we want it. You know? Why not? It's coming. You don't think they want to, you don't think the elites are sick and tired of all these people on this earth? You know? Don't you think they're worried that they're going to lose what they get? It's real simple. The more you get, the more you want to hold on to it, the more you worry somebody else is going to take it from you. And they have been doing this for centuries, hoarding the wealth, keeping the wealth. What do you think the Vatican's there for? They're always worried that some some other person's going to take, that some other religion, some other belief system's going to take what they got. Well... Come back and we'll talk about the Circle Earth. Back in three minutes on the Investigative Journal. Hear it first on FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. 
These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. Gold and silver is tremendously undervalued. Global demand vastly exceeds mine supply by more than 60% annually. There is little in the financial world more certain than a coming explosion in the prices of gold and silver. The U.S. dollar continues to lose value and respect as the world's reserve currency. Our nation faces challenges on many fronts, and a day doesn't pass without another economist bringing forth warnings of impending economic calamity. There has never been a better time than right now to acquire physical gold and silver. Discount Gold and Silver Trading was founded on the principles of truth and honesty. We believe in providing a quality product, quality service, and most importantly, competitive pricing. We provide all forms of precious metals, including American gold, silver, platinum, and rare investment and circulated coins. Silver bars, rounds, and 90% silver bags are on hand for the silver investor. Gold self-directed IRAs are available. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, that's 1-800-375-4188. Okay, back on the investigative journal, and I bet you're all waiting for this half hour. Yes, I'm sure that there's millions of people listening. But anyway, uh, before I play this YouTube, you know, I'm going to do what I said. Oh, I hate these YouTubes, but I'm going to play them, and I got to admit I like them too. I just don't know how to put them together. Uh, but I do, you know, and I'm going to play something about the circle earth. I, I'm playing all this so you guys can figure out who's, what's good and what's bad. Uh, and it's by Crow777, interviewed by Kelly Coffey. Now, if Kelly Coffey, if that's her real name, I will do something I'd never done in my life. Well, I don't know what that is, but I'll figure something out. And if Crow7, I know Crow777 is, just give me your real names and I'll play it anyway. I know there are real people behind that. But anyway... One thing I'm always, before I get to there, we're gonna, it's about a two-hour thing, so I'll play a little bit today and maybe continue it. After the Slavery Day tomorrow, one thing I've always considered and thought about in my life is why, when you make that choice of uh, testing all things and holding on to what is good and you find out you're on the opposite side of the American government and uh, the Vatican and all that stuff, why then... Oh, all these truth people never, you know, always suffering more. Is it really, do you have to suffer for the truth? Is that really what it's all about? I don't know. You answer that to me. Why is it that artists, why is it that all these people searching for what is isn't to be the truth suffer and accountants make millions of dollars and they don't really think about anything? Just write down numbers. I don't know. And what happens when, you know, these people that find the truth going through these traumatic experiences in life? Everything seems to crumble like they lose. You know, I've talked to many truth tellers who say, oh, I've lost my family members. They don't like me anymore. They don't talk to me. I've lost my spouse. I've lost people who are close to me. The only people I have are, are myself and a few other truth tellers over the Internet. I don't even know who they are. And at that point, you know, I know they're thinking of suicide, but they never commit suicide. No. What you know what they do? They begin to soul search. Why is it, you know? And they go on and on. I don't know, but they don't kill themselves. Some guys that go too far, they get killed. Or women that go too far, they get killed. And uh, my dogs always bark at these two dogs that go by. 
Moose, Moose, the little one, the big one, Max, my Malamute, he doesn't uh, bark. He just lets her do the talking. Isn't that similar to a family? Let the woman do the talking. The man just stands there for uh, <laughs> for show. I'm the big protector. But she does all the talking. Okay. So, what is it? What is this thing that happens with people that are searching artistic people? They They always are in deep trouble especially when they search for the truth and they don't sell out to Hollywood or something. And, but they never seem to kill themselves. They get killed sometimes for it, but they don't go to suicide. But then you get an accountant who lives in the, re, in the fantasy world, who believes all this stuff. He has a problem. Maybe his numbers don't match. Or his wife says, oh, he's spending too much time with you. And he kills himself. So go figure. Uh, you figure that one out, because I can't. So I'm going to also let you figure out who Crow777 is, and he spells that with two R's, and Kelly Coffee, spelled with an I, and Coffee spelled like coffee, who they really are, and listen to them. And they're talking about the Circle Earth and all this stuff that we're trying to figure out, whether it's a plane, P-L-A-N-E, or a planet, E-T, the word planet coming after the word plane. When did the planets ever get into existence. Who came up with that word? Who came up with the UN flag? It's a flat earth flag. Huh, I think they're shoving it to you, sticking it to you, is what I say. Well, let's listen to these people here on the Investigative Journal and see what they have to say. I was sent this uh, this video by an uh, avid listener. I trust what they say. I haven't really listened to all of it, so I wanted to play it for you. And I trust their judgment. So let's go. That I wanted a crow on the show to interview is because there are a lot of people that are talking about uh, all of this. But you have got um, what I call scientific proof. Uh, I use scientific proof loosely uh, because science is basically the study of this dimension. And, uh, you know, therefore there are, are some flaws. But you had said something about science that, uh, and I thought it was really, really cool. Uh, because I have noticed about science, uh, having a, a scientific background, dealing with vitamins and biochemistry and, and, and all that, that um, you would try to do experiments and you would go on, you know, someone's theory of things. And then things just didn't go right. So that told me that these theories, there was something wrong with the theories in the first place, that, that we didn't have a good base to work on. So is, is that kind of your line of thinking with um, science? You know, i got to break in here, and I love to critique interviewers because I've interviewed people in all my life. I hate interviewers who, who just keep going. Get to the question, Kelly. Ants that basically we've been uh, lied to <laughs> well, about, <laughs> you know, what's your take on that? <laughs> here's, what, here's what I would say about science. It's kind of a double-edged sword. Um, you know, science gave us the ability to drive in cars, have a refrigerator, and have air conditioning. So clearly you can see how applied science does a lot to shape our world. But in the same breath, I will say that I view science a bit like a religion. It's a club. And there are rules, as in religion, you know, you're allowed to believe and say certain things depending what religion you're a member of. Science is no different. And as an example of this, um, take the moon landings. The moon landings are demonstrably show, you know, you can show provably that what we have been handed as evidence of a moon landing was faked in a soundstage. Um, on my channel, I just posted work from a guy who was a PhD at a Ukrainian university, I think a former member of that university, and he used what's called a, a stereoscopic method, which is basically using parallax on all the imagery that we've been given, where it allows you to take a couple images and then gauge the distance of things in the background. And in certain shots where the astronauts are supposed to be standing five kilometers in front of a mountain range, he demonstrated that this was done on a soundstage, and it's about a thousand yards to those set pieces that are mountains and so what we find is that if science would take a look with their critical eye and their scientific method at the moon landings they would absolutely be able to prove that what we have been handed is false yet what we find is is that as 
a member of the scientific community, it is almost a religious belief that that is not even questioned in the first place. It is just simply accepted as a truth. And so there's kind of the conundrum of where we find ourselves with science. Oh, absolutely. Um, and when you go and look at the, uh, the plant, like where I grew up with the Clovis Indians, uh, it's basically there was nothing here before the Clovis Indians. Like, you know, they were the first ones here. And any of the the archaeologists or scientists that show evidence that there was anybody here before the Clovis Indians gets all their funding pulled. So, and that's how you have a lot of control in the scientific community is taking their money away. Well, that's that's the enforcement system. Uh, you know, there's not a university in existence in this country anyhow that uh, is not dependent on funding which simply means you do what they want you to do or you have no money to do anything and so this is kind of the watchdog placed around you know the things that are studied and the things that aren't studied uh, so we've got Chris Garner over here. He's like, I finally, finally, we've got <laughs> we've got a crow on here. <laughs> yeah, they they had been trying just just trying to email email bomb you. And sorry for that. They did. <laughs> they were <laughs> they like, did. we want him on here. And I was like, oh. I, I heard them loud and clear. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. Uh, all right. Well, let me add uh, to these young guys and girls who are at this uh, testing all things. Uh, let me add this. I've been at it for a long, long time. And what I find in a lot of these shows is, uh, let's just evaluate a few things that were said. Talking about the moon landings being fake, we, yes, I mean, I, I agree with that. Talking about all these, but who are these people? You know, we've dealt on with the question of who. That's the first who, what, when, where, and why that you've got to deal with. Who? Now, will they say the Vatican? They'll say all these religions are blah, 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 all, you know, making an analogy that science is a religion. Of course, you know, we know that. But who is controlling the purse strings? Where does it come from? That is a good who, who, who. That's a good question for the crow. Maybe he should be an owl. So we'll get back to this, and I'm not degrading what they're saying. I'm just saying that generalizations, to me, don't work all the time. And I know we're going to get into some facts about the Circle Earth. That's why I played this. But, you know, I felt like uh, commenting. I think some of these kids need a little bit of critique. They don't go to journalism school. They don't get any critiques. I'm sure most of these people that are on YouTube, they are, you know, and there's nothing wrong with it. we got a million journalists in the country now. Fine. Just figure out if they know the first important question, who, what, when, where, and why, who? We've got a lot of questions uh, re regarding the moon. Go ahead. Uh, th this is, uh, now you come from the scientific background, and as you're aware, uh, I have a lot of the psychic community, the ones that have a, a really high level of awareness that uh, follow what I do and all my craziness and experimentation and falling on my face and getting back up. Uh, but we, <laughs> we all figured this out together. Um, and in, in all this, we have a lot of people who have been remote viewing. Uh, we look at things like Tibet and Book of the Dead, you know, and, and there's, there's a lot of information out there, uh, even carved into pyramids and, and everywhere that, that says, besides the obvious, that the, the, the moon never rotates, uh, that basically says that the moon is not what you think it is, uh, that this appears to be something very, very artificial, and it's not just this floating rock um, in in the sky. So, we're, I know this is a, a big elephant to eat. Uh, but what bite do you want to take first on on the moon? Well, I mean, if you have people asking questions, I'd be happy to address them. Um, either way you want to go. Um, on on the moon, uh, this was just for my experience because I did. I, I didn't know whether it was. I'm gonna send you to the moon, Alice. Remember that? What show does that come from? Oh, <laughs> right to the moon, Alice. But anyway, the moon. Everybody's wondering about that. So I'm going to play, you know, some things. I don't know all the answers. There's so many different things. Does the moon rotate? What is the moon? I am going to a question from somebody who is, the moon, we don't, that proves it's a planet. I don't know. Let these guys tell what they think and take what everybody's thinking and then let's figure it out. All I know 
is that the horizons don't match and there's so much more but the moon is another subject we know we didn't go there like NASA says so I'm believing anything they say let's figure out what uh, crow crow here has to say remote viewing or astral projection I think it was astral projection because when I got there they could see me <laughs> so that tells me that the moon is in a much higher dimension than the third dimension it's not like this this floating rock that's that's in our dimension uh, that it's in the fourth dimension or higher and what it appears also, because most people cannot see uh, the fourth, fifth, or higher dimensions, uh, but I'm trying to teach them to so they can, but they can't see it. So it appears that there is... Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I don't know what she means she's going to teach you how to see another dimension. I don't trust that kind of stuff. But this is what I'm talking about. This is what you got to do. I'm going to make it easy for you and just play stuff that you've heard. But... I don't put my belief system and trust in anybody that says they're going to show me the, how to get to the fourth dimension, astral projection, all this stuff. But you've got to listen to what people are thinking and bringing in to the, the, sub, the subjects that we talk about. Is a type of holographic skin uh, that is over the moon. And this is something that was really exciting when I saw your footage. Because to me, uh, you know, with my, I'm not really a technical person, uh, but just what I know, I looked at that and went, aha, that seems to prove what I suspected in the first place. Well, um, you know, the way you described your audience, I would imagine that many of them are familiar with the Kabbalion or the Emerald Tablets. Um, I would also state for the record that I spent many years and have read probably thousands of books studying Tibetan Buddhism at one point in my life. Um, I've done similar things with, with the Bible that we use primarily in this country. Having said this, in the ancient teachings, which are not very mainstream, which a lot of people in, in a more spiritual community are familiar with, like the Kabbalion or the Emerald Tablets, um, there are seven ancient truths, one of which is about vibration, correspondence, these types of things. Um, when I filmed the lunar wave on the moon and I began to dig into what had happened, and I came to the point where I proved it was a filmed event local to the moon and independent of any you know, equipment malfunction, um, I had endless lines of people looking at that footage. The problem was no one was going to touch it with a 10-foot pole. I had CCD chip designers, PhD physicists, just people from everywhere amazed, but none of them were willing to go on the record because of their jobs or the community they worked in. Many reasons, which is understandable. What finally happened was uh, this year, a few months ago, um, I was sent an email, and in that email was Russian text. Now, I translated the Russian text and came to understand that it appeared to be a chat room with three people in it. I think two of them were male, one of them was female, but what popped out and slapped me in the face was the word lunar hologram. In this chat room conversation that was sent to me, two people were talking matter-of-factly about how the moon was a hologram and how that everybody who knows anything anywhere in the world understands that the Apollo missions were faked. Now... There was a third person, I think a female, in, in this conversation who was saying, it's the first I've heard of it. So links were passed around. One of these links led me to what I consider to be a big breakthrough. It took me to the work of a man who died in 2011. His name was Alexander Katim, or Katim Alexander. And uh, his nickname, I believe, is Hattibov. Now, this gentleman was a Russian researcher who held secret positions throughout his life. In his biography, they won't even list the places. But what hooked me was that the first thing that I saw from this link, getting it translated, and it's very difficult to translate technical Russian. I'm still trying to get good translations. Is that he was describing what I had come to know of the moon. He described the moon as having two faces, an outer that we see and an inner that we do not see. Um, I had come to understand that filming the lunar wave was most likely near a full moon. Hattie Bob said that it was in the third phase all the time or near full until 2012. I had come to understand that the lunar wave would occur near equinoxes. Hattie Bob said not only near equinoxes, the big deal is the vernal equinox and the month to Easter following that equinox. 
And uh, these three things that I had come to understand were completely paralleled in this Russian research. So at that point, I finally came out and made the clip, which kind of changed my channel, to be honest. Um, I had a pretty civil channel up until the point that I stated flat out that the moon is an illusion and that nobody goes above low Earth orbit. Um, so that's kind of where things have come recently and uh, why I finally took the full step of saying, to some degree, what I have come to believe. Um, you know, I, I spend a lot of time trying to inform people to help them kind of wake up to a reality they're unaware of. <clears throat> and in doing this, I measure what I say. Um, I'm, I don't want to say things that are so outlandish that people turn off because then I've kind of done them a disservice. So what I've tried to do is just kind of a slow progression. Well, you know, I agree with him on that. I mean, I can understand where he's coming from, but... Anybody that says the moon is a hologram, that's pretty outlandish. Now, we know that we didn't go to the moon. The real question is, what is it? And I'm going to start researching it all. Because the questions outweigh the answers at this point. Good job, Crow. Up to where I'm at. <clears throat> and to be honest, I still have quite a ways to go. Yeah, yeah, you do. And I hope you get there. <laughs> because this is, this is going to be really exciting when you, you get this information out. Um, so you uh, kind of started in the direction of talking about possibly an enclosed system. Uh, I interviewed Mark Sargent uh, recently, and he cites your work a lot. He is very impressed with your work and puts it... Uh, I said many times, you got to check out Ed, Eric Dubai and Mark Sargent. Eric Dubai... Dubay, who has done a lot of research in the Circle Earth, considers Mark Sargent to be a psyops. Uh, now, the point is, you got to just figure out what he says is valid and what he starts to lead you down the, uh, the wrong path, so to speak. Now, I always say you can learn from these people just as well, so don't turn off the mic or your headphones when you hear the word Mark Sargent. So you can't learn. Without these people, what else we got? You know, we wouldn't be here doing this stuff. It puts it out there. And I'm not sure what all your theories are, what you know, what you believe and, and don't believe. You know, that's up to you to, to tell people. Uh, but when I was researching the flat earth theory and all of the information, it just it made such sense to me. Uh, and all of these questions that I had, had, you know, growing up and being in school and just, you know, uh, looking at things, it's, it really made sense uh, that this planet could be an enclosed system. Now, in my astral travels and, and uh, you know, remote viewing and all that, there is definitely something outside. What? You know, I got a question. I don't, these astral travels. I know there's a whole, I remember years ago talking about astral travels because uh, they used to, it was a big deal on uh, the controlled opposition station uh, what is that one uh, the Nor George Norrie coast to coast and I don't know where these people go but doesn't it give you a feeling like they're better than you or something like they know more I just don't like that so she can keep her astral travels and all that to herself. I, if she goes there, I don't care. I particularly am not interested. Uh, but then again, who knows? Uh, but I really don't like... I, it's almost like she's talking down to me at this point. Now, the circle earth and all this kind of stuff, I can dig. Uh, but you got to understand, where is this information coming from? And who are... What's good and what's bad? That's what you got to figure out. And you can't figure out what's good or what's bad unless you listen to all of it side of if this is an enclosed system that uh this mimics there is something outside of that and i've traveled um, all through it so i guess this is a multi multi-part question if this is an enclosed system why uh, you know are they taking us somewhere who, who is in charge, uh, if anybody, I'm sure somebody is in charge, uh, and, and on what level? And what what is this enclosed system? Because when, when I died and popped out of my body, I went through a membrane 
that was almost like a, a dark dome, if you will, uh, that, that was over this planet that I used to think was round. Around. and uh, you look back and see this dome so you know all these things are going like something's not right this is not what they have taught us in school even about our own planet so what what is your direction or your theories or what proof do you have uh, scientifically about us being in what you call an enclosed system am i saying that correctly yeah that's what i say and uh, just to be very clear for people um, you know, I'm aware that Mark has cited me and actually he's asked me to do an interview on a radio show. He has now not bad for a guy who's three months out of the gate, but <laughs> anyhow, I will be doing a radio show with Mark, um, next Sunday or something. I actually, I think it's pre-recorded. I don't know when it's going to happen. This is what I'll say. Um, you will never find me in the flat earth argument. Uh, people have tried to draw me in and all I see in the concave convex flat earth, all these groups is I see a bunch of people fighting about the very same thing. What I Okay, we'll be back on the Investigative Journal after uh, the weekend. Good night. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188. American Family News, I'm Chris Woodward. Law enforcement officials nationwide are on high alert this holiday weekend. Sagar Magani explains. Every July 4th brings a warning about potential terror attacks. Former FBI agent Peter Ahern figures the public gets tired of it. Chicken little and, and, and crying wolf all the time. But given recent attacks around the world. Just kind of makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up a little bit more. A reminder that the nation cannot get complacent. 
Police in the nation's capital are not. We take every event here in Washington very serious. There will be heavy security here and in New York, where the NYPD's John Miller says don't worry, his officers 